at chapter 26, review number 15. Um, <coughs> okay, so this question, of course, is about the source of the vegetable, you know, whether it's frozen, canned, or fresh, and then the rating that it achieved. So that is two variables, your rating variable and your source variable. So it's got to be a chi-squared test. Now, um, honestly, I think that you could probably go either way on this question as far as it being independent or it being homogeneous, and I'm going to tell you why. Up in the top, it says you want to, a large chain randomly selects this to see if the source of vegetables affects customer reaction. So when it says, does it affect customer reaction, I'm basically wanting to see is the uh, food source independent of the rating. But then, if you look at the second paragraph, run a test at the 2% level of significance. By the way, that 2% level of significance means your alpha. To see if there is a significant difference between the ratings and the vegetable source. So, um, you know, this is uh, also kind of a key play on, you know, being the same. You know, is there a significant difference or are they, you know, do we have evidence to dispute them being the same. So if you had done this problem as a chi-squared test of homogeneity, I could have supported that also. All right, but when you do a phantoms, you do not have a parameter of interest. So we start off with a null hypothesis. I said the null hypothesis is customer rating is independent of source of vegetable. And the alternative that it's not independent. Of course, this is saying it is not affecting it. The null is that nothing is going on. Nothing is happening. It's not affecting it. And then the alternative is that it at, is affecting it. Okay, that the source is affecting it. All right. Um, random, I would say that individuals are selected randomly. Assignment to the type of vegetable is stated random. And so I guess I'm kind of saying that these three vegetable groups are representative of their respective populations. Um, so the question also is, what groups are you going with? Are your groups going to be good, average, or poor? Or are your groups frozen, canned, and fresh? And I feel that they've got to be this direction. Because you're kind of going with the idea that the vegetable source is indicating the rating. So this is the, the vegetable source is the driver. So here's what you have here going on. Um, therefore, those would be my groups that I would define. And since I have three groups, I'm going to write them all out separately. Um, but they're, they're less than 10% of all frozen vegetable meals and so on. The three groups are independent of each other. Large enough. As you can see from the expected count, all expected counts. I saw this missing on quizzes. You just said they are less than five. Well, what's less or greater than five? Greater than or equal to. It's these expected counts here. And then don't forget your chi squared model applies. All right, and so where I got these um, expected counts was probably from doing my, um, running my test. I put my data up here into matrix A, and then the process of running a chi-squared test makes the calculator create this matrix B. And then the best way to view that is in the viewing manner, and so I'll show that real quickly. I said this was a chi-squared test of independence. Um, you might have gone with the chi-squared test of homogeneity. The results I got were these chi-squared values with a degrees of freedom 4. It is a degrees of freedom 4 because this is uh, 3 rows times 3 columns minus 1. So that was 2 times 2, so that's how your degrees of freedom is 4. All right. And so then um, my p value is greater than that alpha they defined as 0.02, so I fail to reject. So since the p-value is greater than alpha, I do not reject the independence. So I do not have evidence of a significant difference between the rating and the vegetable source. Um, and so by the way, in the calculator, 
when you go second x to the negative 1 and you go over to edit, place your items into matrix A. Then you go run the test, stat, over to tests, up to the chi-squared test. Then after you do that, it will put your information into matrix B. So the best way to view this is go second x to the negative 1. Over to edit, it is easiest to view your matrix B, and then down to matrix B, hit enter, and then voila, there pops up, this is an other matri a different matrix I had had in there. That's the best way to view your expected matrix. All right, next. 16, which example would give a bigger confidence interval? This so plays into this <coughs> questions that we had done um, early on the true-false about the confidence interval formula. Okay, so here, you know, we were dealing with this confidence interval formula. Okay, and so let's talk about what they're specifically saying here. A says, and I cannot actually see what it says. Let's see. A says 98% confidence, okay, with N is 36. Okay, so confidence is the same. Critical value is the same, but what's different, N is going up. All right, well, let's investigate that. If N is going up, then what that will change is your standard deviation. Your standard deviation will go down. So as N goes up, your standard deviation goes down, and therefore the size of the interval sucks in and is smaller. So the answer then for A, let's see, oh, it wants which one is bigger. The bigger one would be this portion here. That would, the smaller N would have a bigger confidence interval. Okay, B, you can see the size of the sample is the same. So that standard deviation is staying the same. The difference is 99% confidence versus 95% confidence. Remember, critical values, 99% confidence versus 95% confidence. So your 99% confidence is wider. So the 99% confidence is the larger interval. All right, 17. Describe how to find degrees of freedom for a chi-squared distribution for a goodness of fit. The degrees of freedom is categories minus 1, and the chi-squared test of homogeneity or independence is rows minus 1 times columns minus 1. Number 18, when testing the claim at an alpha of 0.02 level, so that's your size of your rejection region, and the p-value is 0.025, should the null hypothesis be rejected? All right, so this is basic, basic, basic. If your p-value of 0.025 is greater than your alpha, you will fail to reject. You will fail to reject. Your p-value will go when the null hypothesis is low. If your p-value is low, the null hypothesis has to go. All right, second question, what if we were testing the alpha of 0.05? Well, in that case, your p-value of 0.025 would be less than alpha, and your p-value would be low. And if your p-value is low, then your null hypothesis has to go. All right. Number 19 is a problem, and so what we're talking about, and, and actually I need to kind of refresh my memory on this one. This was the night shift workers, and then what we had, well, they had the different shifts, okay, the day, evening, and night. And so they had these work periods, and I think what they did was they played different speeds of music and then compared what was the output that the workers were then um, having on that. Are they related? Are they related, sounds to me, is music speed and shift production uh, independent of each other. So it does say um, 0.05 level of significance, so that's alpha. So here's my whole phantoms without the P. 
Here's my null hypothesis. Shift output is independent of music speed, and the alternative shift output is not independent of music speed. It is a chi-squared test of independence. Woo! Where are my conditions? Holy moly. They are missing. Um, okay, well, let's like quickly go through that, I guess. Man. So, random. They are randomly selected work periods. Um, and I'm assuming then that that's representative of all the people they pick are representative of all of that shift. Okay, independent. There are three groups here. Um, and I'm going to say that the speed, we're kind of checking to see if the speed is having an effect on the production. So therefore, the groups I would be doing conditions on would be the slow, the medium, and the fast. And so then I would say, um, just kind of sounds strange, total that number up and say that's less than 10% of all uh, slow um, music, I guess. I don't know, because this looks like production. So... That's a little weird, okay, but um, that's kind of, you know, the formula we've been working with that I'd be saying that is less than 10% of all, probably it's less than 10% of all things produced on slow music and 10% of all the production on medium music and so on. And then you would do that for the fast is less than 10% of all produced on fast music. All right. So that's that. There's the uh, conditions and don't forget to say the chi-squared model applies. Chi-squared test of independence. There's my chi-squared. My p-value was very large. So I definitely failed to reject. I definitely do not have evidence that the music speed affects production. Okay. When is that through? Number 19. Let's stop there.